Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Find out more later on. Hey, 42 here. If you're struggling to think of something unusual but eye-wateringly expensive to buy for your better half for Christmas this year, why not consider a piece of jewellery made of mammoth tusk? I'm not talking about a hairy elephant who's fallen behind in his manscaping. I mean the tusk of a genuine woolly mammoth, the type that roamed the planet 30,000 years ago. Most of the stores selling these sorts of trinkets are located in Hong Kong, but if you're the 50 type who likes to cut out the middleman, you might want to head straight to the source, Siberia. There, millions of buried mammoth skeletons are being revealed as climate change gradually melts the ground around them. But as undeniably fashionable as woolly mammoth tusk earrings may be, unfortunately for us, it's not just hairy pachyderms that are emerging from the ice in Siberia. Now, we all like traveling, don't we? And do you know what's good for traveling? The fastest and easiest VPN, Surfshark. Did you know Surfshark helps you to avoid price discrimination based on your location? So you actually save money on plane tickets and car rentals whilst traveling. Surfshark runs on any device anywhere and it's packed full of features, such as industry-leading uncrackable encryption, IP and DNS leak protection, an internet kill switch if your VPN drops out, and 24-7 customer support. Not forgetting, it's super easy to install and you can run it on unlimited devices on a single subscription. I've personally been using Surfshark for a long time now to watch Netflix content from other countries, such as the US, that's usually blocked here in the UK. It's so easy, all I do is switch over my location setting and there I have it, I've got access to all my favourite programmes. Surfshark maintains a strict no-log policy, and their network of 3,200 servers in over 65 countries runs completely on RAM, so they physically can't log your data. By using the code 42, you'll benefit from an 83% discount, plus four extra months for free during the holiday period only. That's the 1st of November to the 31st of December. All you have to do is click the special link in the description below. Don't miss out. Unless you've spent the last 10 years marooned on an isolated Polynesian island living off ground seashells mixed with your own urine, you'll know that apparently climate change is one of the most present perils facing humanity today. Its most commonly described symptoms include frequent and intense droughts, heat waves, storms and warming oceans. Melting sea ice and receding glaciers have been reported widely. But one charming knock-on effect of climate change you might be less familiar with is the Arctic permafrost that's thawing faster than a snowman in a sauna. Permafrost is soil that's been continually frozen for at least two years, and it covers around 11% of the Earth's surface, including substantial areas of Canada, Greenland, Alaska, and Siberia. Speaking of Siberia, that's where the oldest permafrost on record can be found. It froze about 650,000 years ago and hasn't thawed out since. But that might all be about to change. The Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the globe. In 2020, the highest ever temperature in the Arctic Circle was recorded in Verkhoyansk, Siberia, a vodka warming 38 degrees. Incidentally, that's the same as the hottest day ever recorded in the UK. But in an area that regularly sees the mercury dropping below minus 30 degrees Celsius. Permafrost is usually protected by a surface layer of soil and sediment known as the active layer that thaws in summer and refreezes in winter. But now, some parts of this layer don't freeze at all, so the permafrost underneath is exposed to warmer temperatures and is itself beginning to fall. As it does so, we're uncovering things that have been buried and preserved for tens of thousands of years. That's why you can now buy mammoth tusk earrings. But could it also spell the start of a new pandemic? Because alongside animal skeletons, and long forgotten plant species, the melting permafrost is releasing diseases that have been lying dormant for millennia. 
Permafrost contains a lot of biomass, dead and living things, including plants, animals and humans. But what's also locked into this underground ice tomb is the mad mix of pathogens, viruses and bacteria that existed at the time those animals and humans died. In many cases, they're nestled inside the organism they actually killed. Bacteria, for example, have developed numerous strategies for surviving in temperatures below zero degrees, including reduced anaerobic metabolic processes, which basically allows them to go into slow motion. They're a bit like Han Solo in Return of the Jedi. Frozen, but alive, waiting for their chance to rejoin the Bacteria Rebel Alliance. When plants and animals die in cold regions, they don't always decompose immediately or totally. Sometimes they move down through the active layer and into the permafrost. When more animals and plants are loaded on top, everything's pressed down even further and deposits accumulate. The permafrost can be anything up to a kilometer and a half thick in some places, and the biomass at the bottom can be hundreds of thousands of years old. With the increased thawing of the permafrost below the surface, bacteria and viruses are able to make their way to the active layer. And the deeper the thaw, the older the organisms that awaken from their slumber. As for what exactly is down there, we basically have no idea. But whatever it is, it's probably headed our way soon. In fact, it's heading our way right now. In 2016, an anthrax outbreak was triggered after a heat wave accelerated the permafrost fall. Anthrax, the pathogen, not the band, is as bad as it sounds. Actually, the band's pretty awful too. The disease is caused by Bacillus anthracis, a bacteria which is commonly found in soil and has some delightful symptoms like skin lesions, diarrhea, abdominal pains, nausea, vomiting, and death. It's quite rare, and before the 2016 outbreak, it was thought to have been eradicated in Siberia at least 70 years ago. But then, the thawing permafrost revealed a long-dead reindeer whose corpse was infected with Bacillus anthracis. The bacteria is thought to have spread to the soil, water, and food supply of nearby reindeer, infecting approximately 2,000 of them. A 12-year-old boy died and a further 100 people were hospitalized after the outbreak crossed over to humans. Thankfully, that's where things ended, but over a million Russian reindeer are recorded to have died from anthrax in the 20th century alone, and their remains are buried in shallow graves all over the country's northern territories. That probably explains why Santa's sleigh team doesn't feature any Igors or Ivans. As the permafrost continues to melt, these reindeer carcasses could be ticking anthrax time bombs. But believe it or not, that's far from scientists' worst fear. Smallpox is a vicious disease that was declared eradicated in 1980, but not before it killed as many as 500 million people in the 20th century alone. Anyone infected with the disease had a 30% chance of dying which makes COVID-19 look like a bad cold. <laughs> the variola virus that causes smallpox is particularly hardy and can survive extremely long periods of time, even when frozen. It continues to exist, officially at least, in two highly secure places, Vector Laboratories in Russia, which housed secret biological weapons research during the Soviet era, and now babysits everything from smallpox to Ebola, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States. Every few years, experts at the World Health Assembly debate whether to destroy these remaining samples, as they did in 2019, when a gas explosion at Vector made everyone feel more than a little uneasy about a sudden outbreak of the plague. But each time these debates happen, the decision to destroy smallpox forever is postponed. It turns out, though, that getting rid of all the world's lab samples of smallpox might not help anyway, because the current and ongoing thawing of the not-so-permafrost looks set to expose some long-buried specimens of the contagion. 
In the 1890s, 40% of a Siberian town's population was wiped out by a smallpox epidemic, and the corpses were buried in the upper layer of permafrost on the banks of the Kolmia River. This particular area is now known to be foring, and the floodwaters of the river are consequently eroding the banks at an even greater pace than before. Riverbanks across Siberia were often places where nomads would bury their dead, so the plausibility of disease-ridden cadavers bobbing along in rivers like rotten toffee apples certainly isn't far-fetched. Scientists from the State Research Center of Virology and Biotechnology in Novosibirsk tested remains of the Stone Age bodies discovered in southern Siberia. They also tested 19th century corpses that had been buried during various modern epidemics. Though the researchers didn't extract the smallpox virus itself, they did detect fragments of smallpox DNA and many of the corpses displayed the sores characteristic of smallpox. Of course, even though outbreaks of anthrax or smallpox would be terrible, they probably wouldn't mean the end of humankind. We've dealt with these diseases fairly recently in our medical history and have vaccines for both. But what about the bacteria and viruses that we don't know about and have no defenses against? Woolly mammoths were roaming the Earth 32,000 years ago during the Pleistocene period. Novel bacteria from this time, named Carnobacterium plesocenium, was recently discovered by researchers from NASA in a frozen Alaskan pond. Scarily, this bacteria was able to be revived simply by melting the ice in which it was encased. Not so scarily, it wasn't actually harmful though it has close relatives that cause disease in fish, which is only a slight evolutionary shimmy away from something that could cause diseases in humans. As recently as 2004, scientists discovered a new giant virus named Pifovirus Sibiricum, which had been frozen for 30,000 years, but was still metabolically active when it was found. This particular sample from Siberia was discovered at a depth of only 30 meters into the frozen ground. And as soon as it thawed, it became infectious once again. The good news is, unless you're an amoeba, this virus is just as harmless to humans as Carnobacterium plesocenium. But the family it belongs to does include some candidates that can be dangerous to us. So we'll have to wait and see what else the permafrost reveals. The oldest known ice on Earth forms part of a glacier located in the Beacon and Mullins Valleys of Antarctica. There, researchers from Rutgers University in the USA claim to have revived bacteria that ranges from a relatively young 100,000 years old up to a mind-blowing 8 million years old. Again, none of the organic life forms found by the team pose an existential threat to humans, but they do offer a hint as to just how much previously unknown biological history lies buried deep in the Earth's freezer, waiting for its day in the sun. And not everything we've found so far has been entirely harmless. Four million year old bacteria discovered in New Mexico was resistant to 70% of available antibiotics and was able to totally inactivate many of them. Having said all that, I should point out that the scientific community remains divided on just how big a threat dormant pathogens in the thawing permafrost may be to us. When these popsicle microbes are finally let loose, they're exposed to oxygen and sunlight, which is very bad for them. So if they're going to successfully wipe out the human race, they're going to need to find a suitable host as soon as possible. But the Arctic is relatively sparsely populated, and many of the people who live there have somewhat limited contact with the outside world. So, even if some enterprising prehistoric disease is able to infect us humans, any outbreaks would probably be contained. Certainly with more ease than an outbreak in, oh, I don't know, the largest city in central China, <coughs> Wuhan. Still, mining and drilling operations to exploit natural resources in the Arctic are being ramped up with every passing year. 
which not only increases the chance of pathogen release from the permafrost, but also increases the number of potential hosts in that area. Just one infected person would allow the virus to replicate, and by now, it's safe to say we have a pretty good idea of how things might pan out from there. Especially since workers in remote locations are often fly in, fly out, and so any diseases would quickly spread to more densely populated areas. Along with more human activity in the Arctic, we can expect more movement of animals like birds and insects too, excellent vectors for disease. Warmer temperatures can encourage new plant growth where there was ice before. This in turn brings new birds and other animals, many of which are known to migrate huge distances. The world's ecosystem is complex and in flux. It's impossible to predict just what may happen when a virus begins to spread. Depending on who you listen to, the chances of humanity being infected with a deadly prehistoric virus are either somewhat improbable or impossible to ignore. To be on the safe side, though, I suggest you stick to the basics of good winter health. Don't eat yellow snow, and always test your reindeer for anthrax. Thanks for watching.